hi there. I'm Stephanie, an educator at the Yale Peabody Museum. Have you ever wondered what color dinosaurs were? Well, you're not alone. In this video, we'll explore color and dinosaurs, starting with a colorful dino activity demonstrated by Kirsten. Then Armand will explain how he used clues to think about how to color one of the Peabody coloring pages that he created. And Yasmina, a scientist who found evidence of color in fossilized dinosaur eggshells, will give us a deeper dive into pigments. And if this video inspires you, we'd love to see your colorful dinosaur. Take a picture and email it to us at peabody.programs at yale.edu. Have fun! Hello, my name is Kirsten and I go to Culp High School in New Haven. I work as a PSYCOR interpreter at the Peabody Museum and today I wanted to show you how to make a paper tissue dinosaur craft. Once you're done, you can hang these in the window in your house. For this, you'll be needing black construction paper, tissue paper of different colors, packing tape, scissors, white colored crayon or pencil, and some dinosaur templates. I made a T-Rex template, a Triceratops template, and for mine I'll be making today, I made a Brontosaurus template. But I'll be cutting mine out. Once you've got your materials and you're ready to start, you can take the dinosaur template and trace with a white crayon or a colored pencil onto your sheet of black construction paper. Cut out along the white lines you've traced. And then cut out a smaller dinosaur from the middle of the dinosaur you just cut out, leaving about a half inch margin. Now take clear packing tape and attach it to one side of the dinosaur outline, completely covering the hole in the center of the outline. Cut out a smaller eye and smile from the black construction paper and attach it to the sticky side of the tape. Then cut out one inch shapes from various colors of tissue paper. and stick them onto the sticky side of the tape, making sure to overlap the pieces. Once you've covered all the clear tape, your dinosaur is finished. You can hang it up on the window. Of course, these tissue paper crafts really aren't what dinosaurs look like. Scientists have wondered for years what colored dinosaurs once were. And in recent research, they have found that tiny particles called melanosomes are in dinosaur feather fossils. Now, these little melanosomes are actually things that carry pigment, and they can help scientists figure out what color dinosaurs once were. That means that you and me can better understand what our favorite dinosaurs look like. Hi, my name is Armand Morgan. I'm a museum instructor at the Yale Peabody Museum. Today, I'd like to talk to you about an approach you can take when you're filling out the Taurus source coloring page. Since the 19th century, dinosaur artists have always relied upon the colors of living animals for clues about what colors prehistoric animals may have been. Fortunately, over the past 10 years, scientists have been able to identify a variety of pigment-bearing structures in certain dinosaur fossils called melanosomes. In living animals, melanosomes were responsible for most of the colors we see in feathers, fur, and skin. In fossils, they provide direct evidence about the colors of prehistoric animals from millions of years ago. Fossilized skin for Taurosaurus is unknown, but melanosomes from a close relative named Cetacosaurus suggest that it was brown with a lighter colored underbelly. When an animal has a darker shade of color on top of its body and a lighter shade underneath, it's known as countershading. Countershading is a type of camouflage and it helps both predators and prey to blend in with their environments. Living examples include antelope, deer, rodents, sharks, tigers, and Barney the Dinosaur for some reason. Here's what Cetacosaurus colors look like on Michael Anderson's amazing Taurosaurus sculpture in front of the museum. Hi y'all! My name is Yasmina and I am a PhD candidate in the Department of Earth and Planetary Sciences here at Yale University. My research focuses on the fossilization of molecules, and that includes also color pigments. When we try to reconstruct the colors of, let's say, dinosaurs, we find inspiration in modern birds. All birds are dinosaurs, 
And that basically means that the color mechanisms that are present in modern birds were likely also present in their dinosaur ancestors. Generally, we distinguish between two fundamentally different mechanisms of coloration. We have structural color on one hand. Structural color results from the more or less periodic arrangement of colorless units that disperse light in a particular color giving way. Structural colors don't fossilize very well. On the other hand, we have pigmentary colors. And I want to tell you today more about these kinds of colors. Melanins range in color from brown to red. And we know that they fossilize in the skin and the feathers of dinosaurs. That gives us a first idea of the kinds of colors we can expect. But there is much more in the fossil record than just melanin. And I want to start with so-called porphyrin pigments. Porphyrins give the colors to bird eggs, but in some kinds of birds, they also contribute to very bright colors in the skin and feathers. Porphyrins range in color from bright blue, like here in this ear egg that I'm holding, to bright red and neon green. We know that porphyrins fossilize, and we discovered their presence in all sorts of carnivorous dinosaur eggshells. Then there is another kind of pigment that is really important when it comes to coloring feathers and skin in modern birds. And here I'm talking about so-called carotenoids. Carotenoids give, for example, the bright orange color to carrots, but in nature they can range from orange to purple. For the moment, we have no idea how carotenoids fossilize in skin and feathers. What basically means that when we're reconstructing the colors of dinosaurs, we're drastically underestimating how colorful they were. Bad for us, but it gives you a certain degree of artistic freedom when you color your dinosaurs today. High five. All right, good key. Let's see if we'll do it again. High five.